Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for coming to our channel. We appreciate you being here. Standing Seam Channel offers Standing Seam the exposure it deserves through education and community. If that is something you're into, keep watching and remember, hit that subscribe button. Yeah, it's going to be about oil canning today. Good topic. Okay, well, welcome back to the Standing Seam channel, uh, live at lunch. Uh, it is our second one, so um, yeah, stay tuned for more. Uh, so I did a, I did a big kind of Instagram uh, barrage over the weekend and got to, tried to bring tried to bring some uh, followers over from my uh, Alpro sheet metal page. Uh, just to kind of grow grow the awareness get some people in so there was a ton of people that followed so I appreciate that Thank you for following also. Thanks for heading whoever did. Thanks for heading over to the YouTube channel and subscribing Because there is a channel now too um, So let's uh, so I'm just gonna say uh, welcome back to the standing seam channel uh, where we give standing seam the exposure it deserves through education and community. Um, okay, it's going to be on oil canning, and we'll just we'll just dive right into it. Uh, let's see here, oil canning. Um, it's a hot topic. Not to say that it's a good topic, because I'll tell you, most of the time, anyone who comes to me about oil canning usually is uh, in trouble at that point and uh, usually oil canning is always brought up at the wrong time usually at the end of the job so what I would always say to uh, you know someone in the standing seam trade is uh, I mean if you're an installer you're working for somebody this won't apply but if you're a business owner and you offer standing seam as a product it better be in your uh, contract that states um, oil canning is not a valid reason for rejection we have uh, we have a nice template for this uh, sort of thing so if you're interested in it you can just like copy paste it put it right in your uh, put it right in your contract but um, it better be in that contract stating front and center that oil canning is not a valid reason for rejection um, Number one reason, because there's too many variables um, that contribute to oil canning for there for it to be, and then even let's say you address all of the variables, which is not which is not re realistic. But let's say let's say in a perfect world that you did, you would still have oil canning. There would still be some ripple somewhere on that roof. Doesn't matter. So um, make sure it's in your warranty. Number two. Um, oh, kind of ties into that is it isn't a valid reason for rejection. That is the terminology that's used manufacturers and uh, You know in in the industry common it, it isn't a valid reason for rejection mainly because um, Oil canning doesn't affect the performance of the roof You know the the actual integrity the structural integrity of that roof it will still perform uh oil canning or not to the um, to the wind ratings and paint warranties that are associated with that panel regardless of oil canning or not so that's kind of like for the business owners right you know protect your ass uh, don't let uh, oil canning bite you in the ass in the end because me personally been there done that it's not great so just to avoid the whole thing do that um, okay so getting into you know what where the um, where the installer may benefit from some tips um, stuff that we've done um, to, um, to help avoid it because even in the contract um, it will in, in our contract it states that hold on okay there we go uh, even our, in our contract, it states that um, you know oil canning isn't a valid reason for rejection, but we will take every uh, measure imaginable to mitigate uh, as much as possible. So, 
there are a few things that you can do that will help mitigate the the um, appearance of oil canning you can increase gauge so the thickness of the metal increase that that will help it uh, tremendously I don't know if you've seen really like if you look at a roof and you can tell wow that that is too thin of a gauge just by looking at it, it kind of looks um, tin foily papery it, it it, it shows every little bump in that roof so um, gray uh, increasing gauge will help carry the metal across some of these inconsistencies in the roof and uh, and then uh, hence uh, avoiding the you know the dips that potentially could cause the oil canning Having said that too, also you can um, you can ask for stiffening ribs in your panels. If you're ordering it from a manufacturer, they, they usually offer that. Um, clear that with the client, let them know. Um, or or um, for business owners, they clear that with the client, let them know that the, that the stiffening rib or the flute or the striation is available. Let them decide. Um, but also warn them that you know more visible oil canning may occur um, But again, these are all things to help mitigate it. It's up to you to how much you want to touch on certain subjects um, Full transparency is usually the best way to go uh, Using uh, uh, clips so sorry the types of expansion clips and um, let's say the length of the panel is you know if you're using steel versus zinc this is going to change uh, follow manufacturers recommendations when it comes to zinc but uh, usually steel 20 feet and over uh, for the panel uh, we start to use expansion clips um, this is going to help oil canning um, when um, when the, the, the panel wants to expand and contract due to uh, temperature variance. And um, so expansion clips will help. Um, the clip height, make sure you have the right clip height for the seam that you're, in, that you're installing. That's a big one. Uh, some guys miss that. If like, for example, if you're using a drainage mat underneath the panel, you're gonna need a taller clip because that panel is technically supposed to float. If you're, uh, if you're just using a normal inch and a half clip on say a job that has drainage mat on it, and just for example, it's just gonna, it's gonna pull down the panel and squish that drainage mat. And it's gonna force down that panel where it does not wanna go. So um, get the right height clip. Always keep in mind your heights on the clip. Um, Okay, I'm going to touch on these last two, and uh, if you want to talk more, uh, hit me up in the DM. Uh, you can uh, you can ask me questions anytime you want. Um, send me pictures, whatever you want. I'm here to help. Uh, so this one's it. It doesn't really. It's not really. It comes. It, it's your approach to the scenario. It's your approach to the installation. Not so much the panel itself. I mean, you can you can add backer rod to the panel to like cup out the panel, right? Um, you know, there's there's there are things you can do with the panel. You can one thing that I like to do is seam the panel before you clip it. So you know, put the panel in place. Maybe get if, if you use clamps, use clamps top and bottom, and uh, you know, seam that sucker before you clip it. Because sometimes that you know seaming that changes the position of the panel potentially and you know once it's seamed that's it that's where it's going um, and I mean this is I mean we're talking about mechanical luck because that's uh, in my opinion that's really the only uh, standing seam you should be installing is mechanical lock just my opinion snap lock blows off uh, anyways Seam the panel before you clip. Something I like to do. It's good practice. Last but not least, um, lay out the roof, especially in some of these complex areas. You want to lay out the roof. You want to really think of your 
approach to the installation you know you sit back let I mean when I when I smoked I don't smoke anymore but when I smoked I, I called them thinking sticks right you light up a thinking stick and you look at your scenario you look at the different elements to okay so I'm gonna have to go here do this first you know order of operations you're gonna have to look at all that and then I would lay it out right I would lay out the roof okay this seam is gonna hit here okay I can't have that seam hit here so I have to I have to adjust and move the seam over you know for drainage and whatnot but one one thing this really helps is oil canning because what you'll have is say you're coming around a dormer top and bottom and you're coming around it and then on the opposite side of the dormer if your if your panels aren't lined up where you need them to be that panels gonna pull over um, the the difference that the panels aren't lined up um, so that could that could force the panel against where its natural position wants to be and it creates oil canning that's installer error oil canning they can call you on that right if they know what they're talking about so these are things that we got to do to help mitigate it yes it's not a valid reason for rejection but are we doing everything in our power to mitigate it that's the the fine balance i don't like putting it in the contract and then you know willy-nilly installing the roof and not even paying attention and then turning and then having an oil can and then turning around to the client and saying well you signed the contract you know oil can it's it's just not good juju you, you shouldn't be doing that kind of thing it's ethically to me it doesn't make sense so um let's do i mean there, there's stuff we can do about oil can you know, I, I, for example, we did a big zinc job this year. Um, we uh, we put backer rod on the back, okay, and um, you know because they were worried. Oh, and by the way, in Europe, oil canning doesn't matter. Actually, they prefer it. Anyways, different different video, different day. But um, so we put we put backer rod everywhere, and at first it looked great. There was no. I said, boom, we. We eliminated oil canning on zinc panels. No one's ever done that. But sure enough, give it a couple days in the sun, expansion, contraction, even though there was backer rod and it was copped out, there was still oil canning. Maybe not as much as there would have been, but there was still oil canning. So um, we, uh, um, we, we try and mitigate it. We try and we try our best to, to eliminate most of it, but you can't ever, you, you shouldn't be going around promising zero oil canning because you're lying and you're gonna get caught. So, um, yeah, that's, um, I mean, there's, you know, maybe when you're, um, let's say for example, oh, well, how to avoid, um, it, one more one more tip if, if you're purchasing coils if you if you own a machine if you're purchasing coils um, you know try different coil manufacturers uh, some coil manufacturers their slitting processes may uh, be insufficient or um, some might be better at, some source out the the, the slitting um, some do their own slitting it depends on the manufacturer so Try different manufacturers, uh, see if you can get better cut coil because that slit, right, at, at the manufacturer's end, if it's not perfect, let's say over a 30 foot piece, there's, you know, a quarter inch, three eighths banana from one end to the other, kind of, you know, um, you know, a, a lower grade slit, and you try and put that through a machine, you know, the machine's strong enough that it's going to force that metal to where it wants, but then once it comes out of the machine, it's basically a preformed crooked panel that you're trying to make straight on the roof. So, um, anyways, I'm. Uh, I think I'm. I'm pretty much at the end of my notes. If you guys have any comments, um, drop them in there, and uh, and then we can. You know, if you have any questions. Um, you know, you can, you can, you can drop me a line anytime. Um, 
yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just start wrapping this up and uh, thanks for joining um, much appreciated this is the first live at lunch that we have posted uh, in the standing seam uh, or sorry on the standing seam channel Instagram page um, last week's was on my uh, business page I was trying to you know hit more people I hadn't made the page yet so um, but yeah, so this is the first one on the Standing Seam channel page. I'm, I'm super, super stoked about this. Um, um, yeah, sh uh, shout out to all the all the people following us, and uh, uh, I really want to add value to you guys. I want I want to bring I want I want to bring some game to you guys. I want to. Um, you know share the knowledge I've gained you know gain some knowledge from you guys too it's not uh, um, it, it's 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 not a one-way street it's two-way street we can all learn from each other you know uh, and I'll repeat the mission statement that uh, you know this the standing seam channel is to give standing seam the exposure it deserves through um, education and community right so it's gonna be all of us um, giving standing seam the exposure it deserves because I, I just I personally don't think enough people uh, know how lucrative a career it could be for them how secure a career it could be for them so there's that too so um, again anyone if, if you if you know anyone who's who may be interested in in hopping on these live at lunches let them know you know get your gather your guys around uh, let's let, let's just drum this baby up right because I think it could be really cool um, again uh, go to the the YouTube page the YouTube link is in the bio of this uh, of, of, of this channel so go there hit it up um, look for um, look for all the upcoming videos like I said we'll be releasing uh, once a week if not more but definitely once a week every Friday so be looking for that and um yeah just um really excited about this and uh hope to hope to bring some value to you guys so i don't see anyone commenting so everyone's just listening and uh so i'll just wrap this baby up uh thanks again for coming and uh, enjoy the rest of your lunch um see you guys next wednesday peace out